Our scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 31 through 37. Then he, Jesus, went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. They were astonished at his teaching because his message had authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with an unclean, demonic spirit who cried out with a loud voice, Leave us alone. What do you have to do with us, Jesus, Nazarene? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet and come out of him. And throwing him down before them all, the demon came out of him without hurting him at all. Amazement came over them all, and they kept saying to one another, What is this message? For he commands the unclean spirits with authority and power, and they come out. And news about him began to go out to every place in the vicinity. There was a 92-year-old man who wasn't feeling well, so he went to his doctor for a checkup. A few days later, he's, he's out, and his doctor sees him out, and he's got this great big smile on his face, and he's got this, this uh, young woman hanging on his arm. And the doctor goes up to him and says, you seem to be feeling much better. And the man said, well, yes, I, I just followed the advice that you gave me. You said, get a hot mama and be cheerful. And the doctor said, I didn't say that. I said, you have a heart murmur, be careful. Well, in today's message, we see a, a new approach. Maybe that's the key to the heart murmurs, you know, a hot mama and being cheerful. But today's approach is a new perspective on the power and authority of Jesus, and the people were amazed by it. Now, Jesus is very consistent here. You know, if you talk to people, they like to blame God, and they say God, the God of the Old Testament is not the same God of the New Testament. They're two different gods, and they're acting two different ways. But here, in verse 31, we see Jesus is being very consistent. Because Jesus, God, is consistent about the things that he does. He goes down to Capernaum. He was up in Nazareth, which is, which is up in the hills, and now he's down at Capernaum, which is down on the Sea of Galilee. So, so he basically went down, down to a lower level. And he's down at Capernaum, and... He's teaching them on the Sabbath. See, every Sabbath, Jesus was in the synagogues. He was there teaching. He made it his habit to go to the synagogue each Sabbath. So God, Jesus, was very consistent in this. And if you truly look at the Bible from beginning to the end, you'll see the consistency of God. Because it tells us God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God doesn't change. Only thing that changes are, is our perception of him. So Jesus is in the synagogue. He's teaching. He's in this worship service. Because this was a priority in his life. And the worship of God should be a priority in our lives. 
So he gives the teaching as a traveling rabbi. And, G, and he taught, and it says the people were amazed or astonished. Meaning, from the Greek word, that they were amazed or, or to be amazed, or they were, they were so amazed that they were surprised. Now, the Greek language has several words that mean amazed. But here it is the context of astonishment or, or being surprised. Something happened that they had not ever seen before. Something that they did not expect. Verse 32. They were astonished at his teaching because it had authority. So they were amazed, astonished, because of his message and its authority. What does that mean? Well, every Sabbath, the rabbis that traveled from, from town to town would go into the synagogue, and they would be offered a chance to teach, and they, they would explain the scriptures, the Old Testament. And they would read the passage, and then they would begin to tell about what the other teachers thought about the passage. So they'd say, well, Rabbi so-and-so says this, and Rabbi so-and-so says this about this, and they would go on and explain and just say, well, this is what this rabbi thought, and this is what this rabbi thought. And that's how they explained the verses. They told what the other teachers had said about the passage. But the problem was is they didn't solve the problem. Jesus, when he began explaining the passage, simply said, this is the truth. Take it or leave it. And the crowds flocked around to hear this type of teaching. See, we need to do the same thing with the Word of God. We need to listen to the Word of God. We need to share it. And then it's up to both ourselves and other people to either accept it or reject it. There's no other choice. We read it and we either accept it or we reject it. And that's what was unique about Jesus. That's what he was telling the people. He says, this is the scripture. This is the truth. Make a decision. And the people were amazed by this. And then it tells us something happened in verses 33 and 34. In the synagogue, there was a man with an unclean, demonic spirit who cried out with a loud voice, Leave us alone. What do you have to do with us, Jesus Nazarene? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now, we are not perfect people, and the same was true in Jesus' day. In the worship service, there was a man with an unclean, demoniac spirit who cried out with a loud voice. Now, when something is clean in the Bible, it means it is something that is holy and acceptable in God's eyes. Unclean means unholy. And we can apply this to, to our lives in a moral sense of living right for God. If we live right for God, then we are living a holy life. 
If we are not living right for God, then we are living an unholy or an unclean life. But our righteousness comes from the work that Jesus did on the cross. We are holy because God makes us holy. It's not what we do. But it should reflect on how we live. And so because of Jesus, we are considered holy and righteous, or we are considered clean. So here in this passage, it the, the Greek word is daemon, daemon, or an unclean spirit. And demonic spirits were fallen angels sent by Satan to harass people, to tempt them to sin, and to ultimately destroy us. And the word demon is only found in 63 verses in the New Testament. The word spirit or pneuma, meaning breath or, or spirit, is mentioned 379 times in the New Testament. So which one do you think the Bible wants us to focus on? Demons or the Holy Spirit? So even though it's in this passage, we need to be focusing on the Holy Spirit. And so it is the unclean spirit that drew attention to itself. It, it was a case of demon possession, and we don't see it often today, but it still exists in today's world. A story about a, a church in the middle of the worship service when there is a, a puff of smoke and in the pulpit up front stands Satan. And people jumped up and they, they began jumping out the windows. They began running out the doors. They were, they were running for their lives. Except for one little old lady who was sitting, up, sitting on the front row who didn't bat an eye, didn't move a muscle, she just sat there. And so Satan went over to her and said, aren't you afraid of me? Don't you know who I am? And the little old lady said, no. So Satan asked her, he said, well, do you know who I am? And she said, yeah. So he asked, well, why aren't you afraid of me? And she said, because I've been married to your brother for 30 years. See, that's one of our problems. We, we joke about Satan. We joke about spirits. And we don't believe that they exist. And because he doesn't exist, that he can't affect us. But in verse 34, it, the unclean spirit says, leave us alone. Leave us alone, the plural. So there was more than one. And he yells and he screams this at Jesus and he asks him several questions. The first question is, what do you have to do with us, Jesus Nazarene? Literally, he is asking Jesus, what do we have in common? The demon is saying to Jesus, don't mess with me, or leave me alone. See, the evil spirit wanted Jesus to go away, 
And, of course, that wasn't going to happen. And here's the lesson for us. Jesus is not going away from us in our lives either, no matter how bad the situation. And then the unclean spirit asks, have you come to destroy us? And this was a, an act of defiance. Now the demon knew that destruction was coming for him someday. There is a coming judgment for fallen angels, and the demon thought it was that day. And so he was attempting to subdue or gain control over Jesus or to bring Jesus under his power by asking that question. And then he says, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. See, when the authority of Jesus comes, whether it's through teaching or preaching, there will be confrontation with evil spirits, and there will even be confrontation with regular people because they want to rule and ruin people's lives. Again, it comes back to you either accept the truth as it is, or you reject it. And so in verse 35, it says, But Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet and come out of him. And throwing him, be, throwing him down before them, the demon came out of him without hurting him at all. And see, Jesus asked for two things here. First, he says, Be quiet. When Jesus says something, we need to obey and listen. And the second thing is to show the great power and authority of Jesus. He says, come out of him, and the demon obeys both times. <coughs> Listening and obeying God is one of the keys to seeing God act in our lives. And we have a choice. We can obey or not, but the demon didn't have that choice. He had to obey Jesus. Now the reason the people were so amazed or astonished because there were there were fake exorcisms in Jesus' day. There are, there are some in in today's world as well. And basically, in Jesus' day, an exorcism was a was a a big show, a a big to do. There would be long prayers, and then and and there would be be screaming and, and yelling and, and just all kinds of of theatrics, and it was usually take place by a body of water. And after the prayers and all the acting and the, the theatrics, there would be a, a big splash in the body of water. And this was to show that the demon was gone. We still have some of those productions on, on TV with, with televangelists and, and, and the shows that they put on with, with all the, the, the grunting and the screaming and the, and the thrashing about. But Jesus quietly rebukes 
the Spirit. It's all about who has the power and authority. It is not a power encounter. It is not a show. It is all about the power and the authority of God. So Jesus rebukes the Spirit. Literally, he says, be quiet, which literally means be muzzled. And if you've ever seen a, a muzzled dog or a muzzled animal, it, it can't bark and it can't bite. And then the spirit was commanded to come out. And it says that the unclean spirit threw the man down without hurting him and came out of him. See, what Jesus was doing was completely different from what the people had, had seen before this. And so in verse 36 it says, Amazement came over them all. And they kept saying to one another, What is this message? For he commands the unclean spirits with authority and power, and they come out. See, the people were amazed because they saw something different from what they had ever seen before. This, this was not your typical exorcism. This was not your typical casting out of an unclean spirit. They saw something different, but they also saw the result. When we trust Jesus, we will see amazing things. We will see results. See, God was doing a new work then, and God is still doing a new work today. And the people were shocked that they kept asking themselves, what is the message? They were astonished. They both they had fear and they had wonder because they saw the authority and the power of God. And here's the truth, the lesson for us. With God's power and authority, things happen. And here it was the unclean spirit or demon being removed. Now for us, Jesus' power and authority is above everything else that's going on in our lives. And because of that, it will astound you. It will amaze you. Your problems, your addictions, your diseases. Jesus has power and authority above anything else, anything that's going on in your life. And we need to know this because there is so much evil going on in our world right now. But we don't need to be afraid of the evil. Because God's promise to us is this. From 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people. Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. The spirit, the Holy Spirit, God's spirit with all of its power and authority, that spirit lives in you. And the spirit that lives in you is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. So we don't need to be afraid of anything. 
We belong to God. We have already won the victory. Why? Because God's Holy Spirit is greater than any unclean spirits living in the world. You belong to Jesus. So right now, I want you to turn to your neighbor, and I want you to say to him, you belong to Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, you belong to Jesus. And that same power, that Holy Spirit power that drove out the unclean spirit, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. So in the coming week, remember you, you can and will overcome the world. And no matter what happens, you can overcome the world in some form in Jesus' name. Because the same Jesus that we read in the Bible is the same Jesus that lives in us. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 113, the old rugged cross. Would you please stand? Number 113.